Hi friends! This is Dainty Tank. Thank you for joining me. This is Highway Blossoms. Next exit. The DLC. Part 3. 3. I got this. I got this. Look at me. Look at me. I can count. <laughs> Anyways, hi! If you uh, haven't been following, then you're like, what in the world did I just click into? And if so, and you're still bewildered, just look down and accidentally click on other buttons. Like there's this bell button. Who knows what that does? You don't know. Click on it. Big subscribe. You subscribe. You don't know what that does. Just click it. <laughs> I have to have it. That's just so fun. Fun. So full of fun. Anyway, drink. Maybe bringing the rainbow into this helps. I love these two. I just wish they'd communicate. There's so much about queer relationships that's a lot different than a lot of just the things you see with heteronormativity in that we innately have to have more conversations because we have to make sure it's safe. And so there's a lot more conversations that ha happen within queer relationships that just don't happen in heteronormative relationships and cis relationships. So, <laughs> with that being said, let's keep watching this disaster. Last we left them, they had just checked into the hotel could have had cute moments together had they not like been filling roles that they thought they needed to do. I think it's a little silly. But we'll see. Boop. Oh no! Wait, wait, go back. Ah particular that you wanna see? Hold on. Got plenty of time. Quick load. Yep. Ah I don't know. Whoa. I I messed up. <laughs> Let me go back. Uh, load this one. Yes. I don't know what just happened. I hit a button. <laughs> I'm so sorry, friends. Anyways, as we take the first step into the fur... Furious. Oh, Furious Las Vegas Heat. There's a different word that you could use there. Like, oppressive? effervescent yeah it feels like we're doing it for the first time oh my if there's any sentimentality to the moment for marina she doesn't show it at all instead she's already got her sights set on the horizon and is pulling me along for here i see there be ways to spend our treasure i see Come! I am weird, it doesn't matter. Hand in hand, we set off down the blazing path towards the famous Las Vegas Strip. Heat makes everything shimmer, as if this whole city is just an elaborate mir mirage. Words. Sidewalk is crowded with people, and the streets packed with bumper to bumper traffic. There are intersections and traffic lights every few dozen feet, allowing even more cars to join the crowd or escape it. Even the most mundane buildings, liquor stores, payday loan lenders, corner markets, tend to have some form of makeup to fit in, whether it's murals or graffiti or other decorations entirely. Make no mistake, Las Vegas is sleazy, but there's a certain greasy beauty to it. Anything in particular that you want to see? We've got plenty of time. Maybe I hit skip accidentally. Hmm. Not really. I just want to see the city with you this time, since last time we, uh... You asked to separate, to go buy phones, you both almost bought each other phones in your absence. Marina, you didn't think about the fact that you didn't have money, and then went into gambling over poker with Mariah. 
Just saying. You know, that, that, that's what you're alluding to. Got cut short. Right. She and I both know that it's a pretty diplomatic way of putting it. The last time we came here, Marina almost lost all the gold we found to Mariah. Come to think of it, you never did tell me what it was that you wanted to buy. The whole reason we got cut up in the mess was because there was some gift that Marina had wanted to buy for me. While I appreciate the sentiment, of course, sometimes I'm afraid Marina's too nice for her own good. Oh, it was just something silly. Mmm. Gonna turn up the voice a little bit more. Yeah. It just sounds a little quiet. How's this? It was just something silly. There we go. In a city like Las Vegas, which is designed to part innocent tourists from their cash, it's not hard to imagine someone like Marina getting suckered into a bad deal. It wasn't a pyramid scheme, was it? Yep, it's Quickstar. Sorry, am I behind on the times? Is it back to Amway? Is that is that how that is now? No. If you really want to know, it was a phone. Just like you were gonna buy, Amber. Well, phones. One for each of us. They were running a deal where if you bought two of a certain model, you'd get a big discount. I knew you'd get upset if I spent money on something like that, though, so I wanted to try winning enough to pay for them. Oh. But that didn't exactly work out. No. Her face reddens, the lingering embarrassment of that afternoon still on her mind, it seems. Yes, but you two were about to find yourself with phones. They were burner phones, but equivalent. It's fine. It's better that it didn't, you know. Why is that? I don't know why. I don't want a phone. At all. Just get her a jitterbug. Like, <laughs> if you've ever seen those old commercials for the jitterbug phone, look, it's a nine dial. Boop, 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 boop. And grandma's got big buttons. Yeah. <laughs> This isn't the first time we've talked about this. Not even the second. You're seriously the only person left alive who doesn't have a phone, you know. I don't know. Good. That means I'm off the grid. No, it doesn't. It means you're a dumbass. You're still the same gay we left an, a month ago. And in a way, that's a little endearing in that they haven't dramatically changed in that time. What if there's an emergency? Facts. I'll just use your phone. No, you don't always have that luxury. Oh my god, please get yourself a phone. What if we're not together? Point. I'll use someone else's. Uh, what if you're alone? Like you were in the middle of the desert, crying over a ribboned out tape from probably the 70s. What if there's no one else around? Why wouldn't there be? Because he ran out into the middle of the desert to bury a tape. Maybe that. What if you're driving and the RV breaks down? I'll hitchhike. Like you were going to make fun of Marina for doing? There's no one passing by. Then I'll walk to the nearest town. And die of heat stroke. It's 50 miles away. I'll walk fast. You can't walk that fast. Period. A human on horseback usually goes around 30 to 40 miles per day, and that's being generous. Honestly, in that oppressive heat, you wouldn't get that far. You can't walk that long. I'll take a break. And then die of heat. It's 100 degrees. And the heat will dry you out and you'll be dead in less than three days. I'll find some shade. Under a cacti? That seems like it went well the first time. You're gonna die, Amber. Point. Then I won't need a phone anymore. You know, that's the first one that actually was like, well, yeah, you're right. If you do die. Oh, wait. It's your girlfriend asking you not to. Not to die. 
Maybe just do that. Why? I don't expect Marina to understand, but having a phone and always being at someone else's beck and call is just unappealing to me. That's what Do Not Disturb does. Just press that button and suddenly your phone stops letting you know. And it, you just check it at your whim. Like, n not that I ever use it much. I really should, but I don't. Honestly, you could just do it. The only person I'd use it to talk to is Marina, and 90% of the time she's with me anyway. Except that 10% of the time in which she's about to accidentally give away all of the money from your treasure hunt. Just saying, maybe it's important, like fiscally important, to like, get a phone. It'd just be a waste of money. Jitterbug. That's the answer. Just get her a Jitterbug. And, or one of those, like, old Nokias from, like, the 90s that last forever and you could play Snake on it if you wanted to. I'd made it my whole life up until now without one, after all. And you've been the worst for the wear. Marina knows it, too. I can practically see the gears turning in her head, trying to think of another argument, but she doesn't. She knows I have won. You haven't, though. Like, she's thinking, hey, let me give you something that gives us more security and ways of communication. And you're like, Psh, who needs technology? I am just like my gramps from the 70s. If your gramps from the 70s had a cell phone available to him, he probably would have taken it. If you say so. I do. Besides, that was months ago. So it doesn't matter now anyway, right? It does, and you almost bought phones. Are, ha, you have not admitted this to her, right? Is that what's going on? You haven't talked about it? Marina only hesitates for a moment. Right. We cross the baking asphalt to a shadier side of the street, and I buy us each a bottle of water from a tiny vendor. That was probably five bucks each. Hey, speaking of gifts from last time... You want to go to that candy store? Yes. You know me so well. It's the peach rings, right? And the gummy bears, and the chocolate almonds, and everything else. But mostly the peach rings. <laughs> Dork. Cross your fingers that I can remember the way to get there. I'm sure you can. Because you just literally walked a straight line back from where you were. Back to, I think it was called like the Sahara or whatever you were parked. Which has the buffet. Buffet? Buffet? I never heard from anybody. Let me know. Is it buffet or buffet? Like Phoebe Buffet or like the Buffy of the Buffet. Buffy or Phoebe? Want me to. Nah. Uh. I'm pretty sure it's this way. Pretty sure. Luckily, my memory and sense of navigation don't fail me. After a couple minutes, I start to recognize a couple of the stores that I passed by last time I came through. Should be right across here. We turn a corner, and sure enough, there it is. It's all in all its lime green, architecturally challenged glory. Here we are. Paradise itself. <laughs> Ooh. Are we gonna have a run in with a cute one? Yeah? I'm inclined to agree, since the air conditioning that welcomes us is like mana from heaven. Inside, the trademark marina enthusiasm finally takes over and she stands there, slack-jawed. Just... <sighs> oh my god. Amber? Even better. I love the voice acting they do. It's so good. Have fun. Can you grab another bag? <laughs> Make that a few extra bags. Last time I came here, they had a deal where if you buy 10 bags, you could get one free. Really? 
She frees in place and spins around to face me. Eyes wide. Do you think they're still doing that? I chuckle. You'd have to ask the clerk. She was the one who told me about it. To my surprise, I moved to recall the attendant's face and her name. Cassie, even though we only spoke for less than a minute. Being in a relationship was still new to me. It was right after our first kiss. After our friendship became something more. Yeah, you're thinking about this all well like Marina is sitting there having an existential crisis over chocolate. It was when talking with Cassie that I called Marina my girlfriend for the first time. Although she wasn't with me then. Think about it, I remember that day a lot more clearly than most days. None of this occurs to Marina, of course, because she wasn't there. Maybe if you could meet... I think me having a little bit of drink and rainbow is just making me complain about the communication a little bit more. I apologize if that bothers you. But I can't help myself. I never even mentioned Cassie to her. No reason to, really. That's just one of the extra bags that I grab for. Dumps a scoopful of assorted jelly beans into it. They make a satisfying sound as they all rattle together. I drape the extra bags over the edge of Marina's basket and then start to wander. On one table, there are a dozen different varieties of crystalline rock candy, arranged in colorful patterns. Beside them are bundles of novelty sodas and thick glass bottles. Ooh, I love the butter- uh, like the butterbeer type ones. Oh, so good! Yes, yes. I love those. Another countertop features something really gross. Real scorpions and other bugs that are encased in candy-like fossils. Ugh. Nope, I'll take the rock candy. Rock candy was like a big deal when I was a kid in the south. We went to these caves that are, were out in Tennessee. I don't even know what they were. It was just a stupid long trip to bring kids out on because like there's nothing in Tennessee. <laughs> Nothing. And we were coming from North Carolina. It was like, ah. Uh... Anyways, we, we spent forever on a bus and then went through caves, which were interesting but very scary for kids. And then they're like, hey, but there's this shop. And the shop has agreed to give you each uh, a couple things of their rock candy for free. And so, like, it was a big deal. It's such a big deal. It's like, oh my god, how did they have make this rock edible? <laughs> Is more rocks edible? And so then we had like some kids who had bought rocks because they had a little bit of money. And so we tried to figure out like, were those rocks edible? And so it's like lots of very poor kids trying to lick rocks. Maybe that's a trauma site. Anyways, hi. Another countertop features really gross scorpions and bugs encased in candy like fossils. Why would anyone want to buy these things? Continuing. <laughs> I'm sorry I got distracted. She's so cute. Oh my god. I continue meandering through the store. Not finding much that stands out to me. On the other side, Marina makes a racket. And she fills multiple bags with candy. <laughs> All while screaming with that face. Is that how I'm supposed to think about this? It sounds like she's really is intending to make good on that buy 10 bag steal if you're still running it. I turn a corner past a giant display of foreign chocolate bars and come across a large window that looks into a giant kitchen. Oh, is she the chocolatier as well? Aside from the industrial strength candy making machine, the kitchen is empty, except for one uniformed girl puzzling around like an agitated bumblebee. Is that right? Even from behind, I recognize her as the girl who rang me up last time I was here. What are the odds? She grabs a tray off the counter. I can hear it clinging all the way from here. She dumps something. Can't see what? Onto the tray and shakes it. Then, as she goes to wipe her forehead, she notices me. Quickly heads in my direction. 
She passes through a pair of swinging doors. She's already peeling off her gloves and putting on a customer service smile. Hi, welcome to Sweet Tooth. How can I help you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm just looking around. Let me know if you need anything. Oh, she taps finger on her chin. Clearly thinking about something. Pretty sure I know what she's going to ask. Sorry if I'm wrong, but you were here a few months ago, right? Yeah, surprised you remember. I was just buying some candy for a gift. I'm good with faces. Although I don't think I ever got your name. Clever. Amber. Nice to meet you for real then. I'm Cassie. But uh, you probably already knew that. <laughs> Last time her name tag was on the calendar to counter, but today it's been to her chest. I've noticed. How do you like the peach rings? Wait, what was that face? I've noticed. It's back to Morty face. Jeez. How do you like the peach rings? Pretty good. My girlfriend loved them. She's probably emptying your entire supply of them right now, in fact. Your girlfriend's got good taste. <laughs> Marina herself comes around the corner a second later. Probably because she heard us stop speaking. So bags of candy drop, <laughs> dangle from both of her hands, nearly scraping against the ground. Who are you talking to? This is Cassie. Uh, she works here. And this is Marina, my girlfriend. Hey there. Hi there. It's nice to meet you. I'd uh, shake your hand, but mine are covered in chocolate right now. Oh, that's a face. Do you two know each other? We do now. She helped me the last time I came here, when we passed through before. So you're not from around here, then? Nah, I'm not really from anywhere. Uh, she's from Carlsbad. Oh, in New Mexico? Nice place! You must have never been there. It's the most boring town on Earth. Boring? You kidding? All those caves, trails, nature? I can't get enough of that. Oh, I like the sparkles they animated. Great job, guys. I know exactly what you mean. Give me some quiet in the middle of nowhere rather than this city any day. Oh. That... That's too much excitement. Ooh, that's a face. Cassie nods approvingly while Marina just shrugs. If you'd grown up there, I'm sure you wouldn't feel that way. Mm. Everyone's bored of their own story, I guess. What does not really from anywhere mean? I spent a long time in Colorado with my grandpa, but we spent more time on the road than anywhere. Ever since he passed away, I've just been driving. That's how Marina and I ended up meeting. What brings you two back to Vegas, then? Besides the irresistible offerings here at Sweet Tooth, of course. Oh, <laughs> that's a face. Marina heard about this alien convention thing going on at one of the casinos, so we're here for that. But it doesn't open until tomorrow, so we're killing time right now. That's an opportunity, if I've ever seen one. And Cassie will probably jump on it. Alien convention? The one at the stratosphere? Sure is. Is it a big deal? Uh, we don't really know what to expect. There'll be a few hundred people at least. She jerks her head in the direction of the kitchen, for she just had just been at work. I'm doing prep work for the same thing, but don't tell my boss that, or he'll fire me. Oh. What you prepping for? I've got a booth there, selling some sweets and homemade stuff. Oh! She gestures around the store disdainfully. I'm like this soulless junk. I'm hoping it'll do well enough that I can get my name out there. Start building a reputation. Get it! This place isn't going to be around much longer. I think even my boss has given up on trying to save it. Yeah. There is a sweet store that's uh, in my town that I live in. It's really cute. However, unfortunately, I'm allergic to corn. <laughs> so, fun fact. Dainty fact. I'm allergic to corn. Which means the majority of candy is off the table for me. I can't have it because 
corn syrup, or high fructose corn syrup, is in the majority of things here. Eh, but that's, you know, US. Save it. What's going to happen? Shutting down because it's too expensive to keep running. The writing's on the wall. Seriously, there's a letter hanging in the break room saying that our time is running out. It's pretty morbid, actually. This place sounds like a joy to work at. It's pretty terrible, but there are a few perks. Like peach rings? She winks, and Marina crinkles one of the bags she's holding. Uh. Anyway, sorry to talk your ears off. Candy's on the house. My treat. That's a lot of money. That's like a stupid amount of money. You're like, yeah, it's my treat. My love, no. Seriously? Maria looks at me wide-eyed as if she scored the biggest jackpot in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's not like anyone will ever notice. We'd just be bagging it up and tossing it out in a bit anyway. Okay, well, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll just be dying of happiness over here. Don't get more than you can carry back to the car. You have two free hands, don't you? She's got a point. You've got me there. I can carry some. Not that far to walk anyway. Marina hurries off to fill her stash as Cassie starts to retreat back through the kitchen door. I gotta get back to work. I already know I'm gonna be coming in early to finish up. You should come by my booth tomorrow, if you get a chance. Sure, we'll swing by. Least we can do to say thanks. Oh, with a final wave, Cassie disappears back into the kitchen. I watch the door as it slowly stops swaying. You watched a long time, then. Actually, maybe there is a better way to show our gratitude. Go over and find Marina, who's trying to tie a bag shut. Hey, I had an idea. What if we came back tomorrow morning to help Cassie make sweets? It seems like she's pretty overwhelmed. Are you serious? Mm. Yeah, why wouldn't I be? It's just unlike you. Really unlike you. Hmm. What is? Offering to help someone out like that. You don't like most people, remember? Yeah. Well, Cassie seems alright. Besides, she's giving you your weight's worth in candy. She's giving us my weight's worth in candy. But I guess you're right. Jeez. Well, what about the con? We'll still go to that, of course. She has to be there too, you know. It'd just be the morning. Marina looks down at the heavy bag she's carrying. It is a lot of candy, huh? She scuffles her shoes against the floor, looking thoughtful. I expect an instant enthusiastic agreement from her. I'm fine with it, I guess. I guess. Ugh. You guess? It's fine, Amber. Is it, though? Like, I love you, Marina, but you're not being very clear here. You feel it's Amber kind of falling into a little bit of Cassie, and Cassie doing a little bit of hinting at Amber. And I kind of feel the same, but, like, on the flip side, you're being weird. Talk. Okay, I'll go let her know. Jeez, and that excitement. Leave Marina again and go knock on the kitchen door. A few seconds later, Cassie opens it. Hey, back again? I'm still here, actually. Marina and I were thinking we could come help you out tomorrow morning, if you want. You said you had a lot to do, and we owe you for the candy anyway. Cassie looks stunned, then shakes her head. If you're sure, then, then yeah, that'd be a huge help. Just having the company would be nice on its own. That's really nice, but... Marina and you didn't think that. You did, Amber. Store's technically closed tomorrow, but I'll be here anyway. Just knock and I'll let you in. Will do. See you then. Mm. See you. And for real, thanks. You guys are lifesavers. No, I'm sure she has some in the bag, but Marina definitely wasn't part of that. Cassie disappears into the kitchen for a final time, and I join back with Marina. She's carrying four full bags that look full to bursting, and hands me two of them. So, tomorrow then? Yep, tomorrow. She said to just knock when we get here. Uh-huh. Alright. 
Mm hmm. I still expected more hype from Marina than she's shown. Maybe she's just not looking forward to waking up early. Or she's worried about your relationship. I wonder why, non communicative person who doesn't want a phone that literally is the symbol of communication. Got everything you want? I mean, she's taking you home. Woo! Yep. I think I should be set for candy for at least the rest of the year. Good. Then what do you say we drop this off at the hotel and grab dinner? Get it. Sure. Where are we going to eat? I've got some place in mind. I think you'll like it. Ooh, look at that red tent. We head back to the hotel to drop off the candy and freshen up before heading out to dinner. Freshen up. You, I really wonder, did you ever get Marina more clothes? Anyway, I've sorry. I've got some place in mind. Here we go. I use my vague knowledge of where distant different landmarks are relative to each other to guide us to our ultimate destination, the MGM Grand Casino. It takes us a little over an hour to get there, although a good chunk of that comes from Marina's multiple detours and shops that interest her. Six months ago, all this walking would have killed me. But now, after our multitude of hikes, it doesn't really faze me. Still hiking, huh? Marina reads the name overhead as we walk and step inside. It takes her a moment, but then her eyes go wide. Amber! Is this the place with the lions? <laughs> it used to be. They shut down that exhibit a few years ago, though. Yeah, Sigmund and Freud. <laughs> no, not Sigmund and Freud. Fuck. What was it? I don't know. The lion people who were eventually attacked by their lions. Cheers! The disappointment on Marina's face is so profound. I almost regret bringing her here. Come on. Where we're going has something almost as good. As good as lions? I doubt it. I don't know. Steak is kind of better than lions, but that's just me. You'd be surprised. Besides, don't I always pull through when I promise something? Well, I guess you have a point. She wraps her head and her arm around me, nestling her head close to mine. Oh, the red cheeks. It makes it a little tough to walk, but I'm glad to take that trade off. I can't believe Las Vegas isn't that big to you. I'm pretty sure there's more people in this one building right now than my whole hometown. I think that says more about New Mexico than Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, probably. I got Marina in the right direction, with her sticking to me whenever I make a turn. There are occasional signs instructing us on where to go, on where we're going, but so far Marina hasn't caught on. Finally, we start to see some signs that we're in the right place. The decoration turns into a generic palace, to artificial trees and wood, and the sound of cawing birds and chirping monkeys plays over the speakers. As the restaurant's name and logo loom over us, Marina slides off of me to gape. Amber, you were right. Oh. The Rainforest Cafe. The name tells you everything you want to know about it. That sounds fun. Pick trees, crowd the area, covered in realistic looking leaves, ambient lighty lights up high, make it a decent replica of a rainforest canopy. There's even a projected sky, complete with a nice full moon. Honestly, it's pretty hokey, but in an endearing way. Even I have to admit. Come on, I'm starving. I have to drag Marina away by the hand from the oversized gift shop, whose size rivals the restaurant part of the building itself. Our waitress seats us quickly. And Marina orders a cola while I request my usual black coffee. Coffee? Isn't it almost your bedtime? I don't even notice the caffeine. I just like the taste. Fair. 
Besides, how can I sleep when I'm so excited for tomorrow? Aww. <laughs> you could at least pretend, you know. Marina is excited about it, plus it's for a child. Oh my god. I am pretending. Bullshit. <sighs> that one gets me a well-deserved but gentle kick in the shin. <laughs> Could've fooled me. Yeah. I lay my hand on top of Marina's, which has been resting by her already half-empty drink. I am looking forward to it. For real. I know you're excited about it, so I am too. There we go. Good job. Marina not, but it's clearly half-hearted. I have to change the subject. So, spot any lines yet? Huh? I blinked twice. Fast. Like I interrupted her from her some deep thought. She has thoughts, you know. Look around. So far, Marina hasn't even noticed the best part of this <laughs> restaurant's theming. And the main reason I brought her here. She looks around somewhat glazed over before she knows the animatronic monkey scurrying along a bench. Al along a branch, not a bench. Then the light comes back to her eyes as she notices more and more. Oh, look! She can't help but lunge across the table to point at a robot <laughs> at a robot parrot that's flopping its wings and rocking on its perch. It's like it's just like when she tries to give me driving directions, she can't help but get a hundred percent into it. Check out the elephant over there. Directly behind her, and several meters away, a realistic looking elephant is trumpeting silently. It looks like it might be life sized. Okay, this is pretty cool. <laughs> Told ya. Give it a bit. Every so often, there's a little show. Do you think they'd let us move tables to get a better view? For real? Marina shrugs. Think we could? I want to tell her that we probably shouldn't. There's probably some complicated system that they have set up to keep track of how many people they are sitting at each table. But I think of her pulling her hand anyway, realize what a dumb thing it is to worry about. Sure, why not? We grab our drinks and scurry like a monkey over a branch over to a different table. More in the middle of things. Our new spot right is right ben <laughs> beneath some fancy flowers and equally fancy butterflies. Marina laughs to herself and so we settle into our seats. What's so funny? I was just thinking of that time we snuck into the mummy cave ruins. It kind of felt the same way. <laughs> I have to wonder how boring Marie's childhood must have been for her to compare the two. I don't know, you kinda had Linda. <laughs> Linda. I don't think they'd arrest us for changing tables in the Rainforest Cafe. No, but they th they would have for the mummy ruins. But it was kind of a jerk thing to do. He should have informed the hostess at the very least because she marks where you are. Instead of laughing, Marina's face goes white. Do you seriously think we could have gone to jail? Oh, for sure. Yes. For trespassing on a protected site like that? Yeah, probably. All it takes is a single park ranger on a power trip, and we'd have been toast. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. You never said that! Eh, face. Well, it turned out all right, didn't it? Marina smiles. <laughs> yeah, I... Oh, wait. Yeah, I'd say it did. She looks away from me, turn towards the ferns and artificial jungle rocks. I think that was the night I started to fall in love with you a little. Aww. Aww. That's adorable. Even though she had an existential breakdown in the wall of the mummy ruins. My heart pangs. Even after months, it still feels weird to hear someone talk about me so affectionately. Get used to it. Like, oh yeah, she's referring to you. She thinks you're worth loving. And you are. As dumbass as you are. Yeah, you are. 
really? And yet, there that's all I'm able to choke out. Fortunately, Marina doesn't seem to mind. Yeah, it was, um... Oh, how do I say this? Say it however. I'll know what you mean. It's such a you thing to say. <laughs> Before I can open my mouth to defend myself, Marina shushes me with a finger over my lips. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Anyway, before that, I had kind of felt like you were just putting up with me. Like, you didn't really like me and just felt bad for me. Mmm. But that night, I knew I was wrong, and that you were someone special. And I kind of realized that you were what I had been looking for without knowing it. Someone that made me feel special, too. Oh my heart! Oh my god! Oh! <laughs> Oh man, that's the most communication you guys have had in months. <laughs> oh. So I didn't care about not finding the treasure. I was happy for totally different reasons. You had already found half of the treasure that you ultimately found. So, good news. When I think back to then, I feel like it may as well have been another lifetime. I always thought that people saying they didn't know how they lived without their partners was melodramatic. But now I think it might be true. Do you remember after we left? And played the tape? Yeah, I do. I think of it almost every time I hear it now. <laughs> Me too. Marina reaches across the table and I take her outstretched hand. Hey. Amber? Yeah? I love you. Oh, I love... With a roar, an animatronic gorilla near our table comes lurging, lunging out of the shadows. The teeny recording overpowering... Tinny. Tinny recording overpowering what I was about to say. Thunder booms overhead, pumped out of the loudspeakers as the whole fake rainforest comes to life. Loud bird calls echo from one side of the restaurant to another, interrupting every conversation. <laughs> Forget what you were saying. Rainforest is now! <laughs> Above us, the butterflies rustle. The flowers rustle, rustle, rustle. All of the different electronic animals come to life at once, just like I told Marina they would. Did you really tell her they would, or did you tell her there was a show? Although, it could have happened at a better time. Silla gets the reaction I'd hoped for from Marina. Sorry. I do that because I actually have uh, an old injury from rugby. I have a lot of old injuries from rugby. But this one actually hurts my hand on and off. So I have to put pressure against it to have it like click back into place. Silla gets the, <laughs> gets the reaction I'd hoped for from Marina. Who looks as enchanted as if they'd rolled out of an actual zoo full of live animals. The show is short, less than a minute total, but it ends with her beaming. Okay, that was as good as lions. <laughs> Yay. Told ya. Our meals come out soon, and they're pretty good. Most of the dessert that I sneakily order while Marina's in the bathroom that I'm most looking forward to. There we go. When, Marie, when it arrives, Marina's eyes bug out just as much as when the moving animals first started. The dessert is a monument to excess. Several chocolate brownies leaned against a vanilla ice cream core. On top is a mess of whipped cream plus chocolate and caramel sauces. The centerpiece, though, is a flickering sparkler, just like the kind kids wave about on their 4th of July. Stop it to the middle, poking out of the top like a flag. Volcano! Volcano! The witchess tries to sound enthusiastic as she sets our dessert down in front of us. With two spoons! Marina takes one of them and searches for a point of attack. It's huge! <sighs> I don't even know how to eat this! 
I'm sure you'll find out. Start with one of the brownies. She scoops up a bite that has ice cream and whipped cream included. She practically unhinges her jaw to make it all fit, but manages. Good. Amazing. <laughs> Good job with that voice acting. I have to give it to them. Both take care of the to avoid the sparkler, which is more or less stop sparkling. Have I ever told you that I'm afraid of volcanoes? When I was a little kid, I thought they were going to be a way bigger problem in my life. Oh. But they still kind of freak me out. Mm, how come? They're just mountains, basically. Yeah, mountains that breathe fire. <laughs> I'll cross them off our list of places to visit sometime. You're a sweetheart. Between the two of us, we managed to finish about half of the mountain in front of us. The other half remains on the plate. Getting progressively soggier as the creams melt. Wanna get it to go? I kind of do, but there's so much sugar waiting for me already that we probably shouldn't. We make difficult decisions to leave it behind, but I'm pretty sure I catch Marina's casting a few regretful looks as we leave. When we finally get back to the hotel, it's even busier. Then when we left, most of the slot machines are full and the air is heavy with the smell of cigarette smoke. Marina makes a face as we hurry to the elevator and up to her room. There we go. I think this is a good place to end it. <laughs> we got to meet Cassie again and we'll see what happens at the convention again tomorrow. Thank you for joining me. Subscribe so you can see what goes on next time. And... No promises on me not drinking. Mm. Hmm. Alright, with that, I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye!